Today we describe the ECG with second degree AV block type 1 or MOBITS 1. For proper evaluation of this or any other ECG, we will use an algorithm. So here I will show you not just the ECG criteria, but also the approach to checking any ECG and avoiding mistakes. So we start with paper speed and voltage, which help to make correct measurements in the future. 50 mm per second means that one large box equals 0.1 second and one small box 0.02 second. Note that voltage is doubled 20 mm per millivolt, which we will take into consideration during the measurements of the amplitude of the ACG waves. The next step is the definition of the pacemaker, which means the evaluation of the P wave. We see the positive P wave in AVF. Positive wave means that wave is oriented upward. We see a similar P wave in the V5 lead. In V1, the first part of P wave is oriented upward, and the second part is oriented downward. This type of P wave is called biphasic. To define the pacemaker, compare our P wave with P wave in case of sinus rhythm. In case of sinus rhythm, P wave is always positive in the first, the second, and AVF leads. Always negative in AVR, any of biphasic, positive or negative in AVL lead, positive in all chest leads except for V1 where P wave may be biphasic. As a result, in our case we have a sinus rhythm. The next step is regularity, which means checking RR intervals. Define the RR interval as a distance between the R wave peaks. As you see, the last RR interval is much bigger than the others. Remind that rhythm is regular if difference in RR intervals is less than 10%. Even without measurements, I see that here we have RR difference of more than 10%. So sinus rhythm is irregular. The next step is the heart rate calculation according to the paper speed. Here you can see many different ways to calculate the heart rate in case of 50 mm per second paper speed. But if you usually work with 25 mm per second paper speed, use other formulas. Let's use large boxes for heart rate calculation. Calculate how many large boxes the RR interval consists of. In our case is 9 and 1 half large boxes. Now 600 divided by 9.5. So the heart rate in the first RR interval is 63 beats per minute. Now do the same stuff for a bigger RR interval. Here we have a 16 large boxes. According to this, the heart rate is 37. Now let's find out why we have those rapid heart rate drop. Inside the long RR interval, we see one sinus P wave, which is not followed by the QRS complex. So this is a single QRS drop. P wave as atrial depolarization is present, but QRS as ventricular depolarization is absent. So something wrong with the conduction between the atria and ventricles, which means some kind of atrioventricular block. If we have a QRS drop, it is at least second degree AV block. If we see only one QRS drop, this is not higher than second degree AV block. Second degree AV block can be MOBITS 1 or type 1 and MOBITS 2 or type 2. So now our task is to define which type we have here. For distinguishing MOBITS 1 from MOBITS 2, we need to check PR interval before the drop and first PR after the drop, and the duration of the pause related to the QRS drop. The first PR interval consists of one large box and six small boxes. Remind that in case of 50 mm per second paper speed, one large box is 0.1 second and one small box equals 0.02 second. According to this, the first pair interval equals 0.22 second. Check the other pair interval before the QRS drop in the same way. The second pair equals 0.32 second, the third 0.34 and the fourth 0.38 second respectively. As a result, we find out that PR intervals progressively increase until the QRS drop. Now let's check the PR interval after the QRS drop, which equals 0.22 second. Therefore, PR after the QRS drop is shorter than PR interval before the QRS drop. 
And the final point that help us to distinguish Mobitz 1 from Mobitz 2 is the pause duration. Compare the duration of the pause to two previous RR intervals. In our case, pause due to the drop is less than two previous RR intervals. So, progressive PR interval prolongation until the QRS drop, together with a shorter PR interval after the QRS drop than PR interval before the drop, and pause duration due to the QRS drop, which is less than two previous RR intervals. All of above indicates the second degree AV block type 1 or Mobitz 1. Now we check the remaining ACG parameters. Mean QRS axis can't be evaluated by the three leads ACG strip. Let's go to evaluation of all waves and segments. As you see, all measurements, except for PR intervals, are in the normal range. The last stage is QT interval measurement. For measurement of QT interval, I usually use the tangents method. If you want to know how to use it, we have another video about it, link will be in description. For corrected QT interval calculation, I usually use an app on my phone. Heart rate in part of ECG where we measure QT is in range from the 60 to 100. Therefore, we use Buzzard's formula. QT interval also in the normal range. So, if you like the content, press like and subscribe buttons and have a good day. Here we go.